Hi everybody, today I want to show you something I've been doing with Tmax lately. Um, I configured it to provide me with a different interface for entering copy mode. So I'm just going to like get some stuff on the screen. Uh, let's cut that file there, cut another file. So this is what my copy mode looks like. Uh, down the bottom here, uh, you've got a kind of Vim style mode indicator that shows you're in copy mode. Um, and here we have a count of lines. Um, and as we move up through the buffer, you'll see that the count decreases and I can jump to the top and you know I can search for something like uh, aspects and uh, when it gets to the bottom, it will eventually loop around back to the top again, um, as we just saw there. Uh, and so that's the fancy new copy mode. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, to demonstrate, I'm going to show you what copy mode would normally look like. Um, so let's try to get a new TMAX session. Um, I think yeah, that'll work. Uh, what, what is that doing? So dash L is telling it to connect to a different socket than the default one. That means it won't connect to the existing TMUX server, it'll start a new one. Um, and the F flag telling it to read from DevNow basically says read no config. Um, so when I open this I've got like a vanilla uh, TMUX config and now I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did before. I'm going to produce some output. Um, I'm going to cat, I don't know, ZSHA C. I'm in my home directory this time. Okay, and now let me see if I can figure out how to get into copy mode using this. Uh, no, that didn't work. Uh, it's control B, that's right. No? Oh my God. Uh, yeah, how do I get into copy mode? Tmux uh, list keys. I mean, I don't even know what I'm doing here. How do I get into copy mode? Control B. Whatever. Will that put me in copy mode? Okay, I'm in copy mode. Because I don't even know how to get into copy mode without my key bindings. Uh, so one thing you'll notice uh, that's different about this copy mode, obviously it doesn't have the mode indicator down the bottom left. Also the uh, line indicator of where you are in the scrollbit buffer, instead of being on the bottom right, it's at the top right. Um, and you will notice something else, that it's saying that we're zero lines into the scroll back. And as I move up the scroll back, the count actually goes up. Um, if we go all the way to the top, um, it shows that I'm in position, you know, 1056 out of 1056. Now, I found this to be incredibly confusing because, you know, I might once again search for a word. Um, and as I move through the buffer, oh, that doesn't help me. Let me search for another word like Winston. It probably appears in a few places. As I move through the buffer, um, I would see it jumping. The numbers would jump. Um, and this word is too common, but... <laughs> Uh, let me jump down a little bit more. So as I skim, skim down here, I basically had no idea where, where I was in the buffer. I'd see the numbers going up and down and I'd, I basically wouldn't know where I was. Um, and the reason why I wouldn't know where I was is because it's counting from the bottom up, whereas almost every other tool counts from the top down. So for example, if I, you know, if I open a file like uh, config, git, config, and, and I set the line numbers to be normal, uh, line one is at the top and as I go down, the line numbers get bigger, for example. Uh, or if I use less to look at that same file with line numbers, um, the line numbers naturally count from the, the top down. Um, so for me, it was a lot of cognitive load to get into TMX copy mode and figure out where I was in the buffer because I have to think, hang on, like, okay, I'm in TMX copy mode now. That means the, the numbers are counting from the bottom up, which means I have to invert what would be the natural sense and blah, blah, blah. Basically, I found it annoying enough to actually make a change. Um, so now I'm going to get out of this TMX instance those that I don't know how to use and back into the other one. I'm going to show you how I did this. Um, and along the way, I might show you one or two things about TMX configuration that I've, I've learned in the process of doing this. Um, now, as this comment here indicates, um, I'm using the percent hidden uh, facility. What that does is it enables, it enables you to basically declare environment variables that you can use throughout this file, or at least they look like environment variables, but they're not actually visible to child processes in, inside TMUX. Um, so for example, I can do things like, you know, declare, you know, assign the Tmux version to a variable and I can have these effectively Boolean variables that tell me which version of Tmux I'm running in. I can use them inside the config file to turn things on and off depending on how recent the version of Tmux I'm using is because a lot of the things I'm doing in here require a recent version. Um, and so you can see how this one is used. Basically, if in Tmux 3 or above, we do nothing. Um, if we're an older version, then we do this. Um, and I think that's the only thing I'm doing with TMX 3.4, uh, 3.3 or above. TMX 3.4 or above, I've got this stuff here to navigate um, between prompts using operating system codes, which are special, um, in this case, escape sequences that enable you to mark 
places within the prompt. So for example, if I do, once again, I'll you know, run a few commands. I'm gonna run that command a few times. I'll run a different command, run another command, do, do that. Cat, the pipe is JSON. Um, so I've got key binding setups that I can jump between prompts. So that would be, I'm hitting O and I to go um, in and out. The analogy here is kind of with the Vim drop jump list where you can use control O and control I to um, move in and out of the jump list. So I'm effectively thinking of the prompts as like a jump list. Well, in my prompt, I've got it emitting these escape sequences and TMAX basically knows how to leverage those to do prompt navigation. Um, so that's why I was uh, keying that off being in TMAX 3 for above. Um, TMAX 3 5 or above um, is something that I'm using in producing this new copy mode. Basically, if I'm in 3 5 or above, then I have access to another variable to tell me whether or not I have a search result available. And in that case, I can show the search count in there. So, for example, if I search, if I go into copy mode now and I search for uh, focus events, you'll see um, nothing. Nothing interesting. Oh, yeah, it says one result down the bottom. <laughs> Um, it's kind of confusing because you can see the, um, the the Vim counts as well. So let me just actually uh, get out of copy mode because it's confusing things. And I don't know, force Vim to redraw the prompt area. Okay, this will be a bit clearer now. So if I search now for set titles, you see it shows one result, but if I search for set titles with a Z, it shows nothing. Um, so that's conditionally possible in Tmux 3.5 or above. Um, so with all that out the way, let's look in a little more detail what's actually happening with these hidden variables. Um, what, the first one is basically just grabbing the Tmux version. And at the moment, I'm running a Tmux uh, pre-release. So the Tmux version number is next hyphen and then the version number. So what this first hidden variable is doing is basically doing a substitution. So wherever it sees next hyphen, it substitutes with nothing. Um, and it's doing that inside the contents of the version uh, property, I guess you'd call it. I'm actually sure what Tmux calls these. Sorry, no, Tmux. So, for example, something like uh, pain. I'm just going to search for one that I know. Pain, 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 current path. This, these are called variables. There you go. They're called variables. Um, so, yeah, inside the version variable, we effectively get just the version number, and then these other ones are what I'm using to detect what version we're in. Um, so, e is basically an expression. The operator that we're going to do is a binary operator, in this case, greater than or equal to. F tells it that we're gonna do a floating point comparison. I'm not sure what the zero is. Um, you could look it up in the manual if you cared, but basically it's gonna look in that Tmux version variable that we just uh, just assigned and check to see whether or not we're floating point greater than 3.3. So I guess that's important because it's not doing a lexical, lexical graphical or alphabetic comparison. So for example, if Tmux got up to version 3.10, um, I actually, let, I was about to say that 3.10 would be greater than 3.9, but I'm not actually sure if that's true, because if it is actually doing a floating point comparison, then 3.9 is still gonna be bigger than 3.10. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, so we've got these hidden variables, like that, as I said, they're being declared and they're available within the, the TMX file, but not outside of it. So let's jump down actually to where we were before. In order to make things reasonable, I make heavy use of these hidden variables. Um, so you, I could have actually, what I'm really doing here is, I'm setting the pain border format. And so here we have a ternary expression. That's what this uh, question mark means. Basically, if the is copy mode variable is set to something truthy, then we're gonna show the copy mode left string, the copy mode center string, and the copy mode right string. So I've effectively broken up the copy mode uh, line down the bottom of the border. Actually, let me just split this to make it clearer. Um, the border here, uh, I'm gonna move my mouse to show you what I'm talking about. This border here between the top pane and the bottom pane is what's being formatted. And effectively we have a copy mode left, which is this bit here. Uh, copy mode center, we could show something there, not currently showing anything. Or copy mode right is this bit over here where we're showing the line numbers. I mean, because the, the pane below isn't in copy mode, uh, it's not showing anything. That's because of this ternary, like only uh, takes effect if is copy mode is truthy. Otherwise it's just whatever is after the comma, which is nothing. Okay, so let's get out of copy mode. Um, so let's, I won't go through all of this because it's probably too much, uh, but I think the pattern is useful to know and if you're interested, you can study it uh, closely. Um, but the pattern I'm using here is basically, <clears throat> uh, as I say, using hidden variables. One second. Had to cough. Um, it's effectively just using hidden variables to make this more readable because I could have just made this one huge long string in the configuration file and then I don't think I ever would have been able to edit it again because I wouldn't understand what was going on. 
So is copy mode is once again um, just using an expression check. In this case, not the general one where you can uh, say E to indicate that you're going to do an expression and then provide an operator. I think this is a kind of older syntax uh, before the E operator was supported or the E uh, parameter expansion or whatever you want to call it. Before that was added to Tmux, you could do things with equals equals here to check for equality but the list of possible expressions you could use was less. But for simple equality comparisons, this works. So basically we're gonna look at the pain mode variable um, and if it's equal to copy mode, then this thing is gonna be true. Um, and copy mode marker is basically at the moment, the only thing that we're gonna show on this left side of copy mode, um, and here this syntax here between the scare, bra the, square, the scare brackets, the square brackets or the scare brackets, it's actually Halloween yesterday, so they probably are scare brackets. Um, this basically says, <clears throat> you know, how we want this text to be formatted. And as you can see, it is just uh, a couple of spaces and then something that looks a bit like Vim. So if I, I'm in visual line mode right now, see how Vim uses down here at the bottom, uh, two hyphens uh, and some uppercase letters and another two hyphens. So that's what I'm using there. And over here, um, these, whoops, these square brackets, I'm having trouble getting around. Uh, hard to talk and do stuff at the same time. Anyway, this stuff here, um, basically resets all the formatting that I applied in the previous square bracket. So as you can see here, I'm telling it to be left aligned, make the foreground green and the background black. Um, and as I said, that's the only thing in the copy mode marker. Then we have some more expression checks. Um, this one shows the and and combinator. So this is a binary operator, which basically says if both of the following things are true, the, um, that a comma separated in, in what follows, then this thing will be true. So has search result will be true if the expression is greater than, in this case, if search count is greater than zero, um, and also if the search is present. If those two things are true, then we'll say we have a search result. Um, and then result or results, this is basically a way to decide whether it should be plural or singular. So if the search count, once again, is equal to one, um, then that means it's singular, so we shouldn't use an S. Um, that's why we've got nothing in between these two commas. Otherwise, we will use an S, which means we'll append an S. So this this hidden variable here is either going to be result or results. Um, and then this one here to see if the result count is partial. Right now, I can't even remember what that is. Um, actually, yes, I can. So uh, partial results are what happens when Tmux finds so many, so many search results uh, that it overflows some either timer or internal counter, and it stops looking for more results. And in those cases, it would show greater than 100 or greater than whatever the cutoff is, as opposed to just crunching through the entire scroll back history, which might be quite long, you know, continuing to accumulate results. And finally, the search result count. Um, basically what we're doing here, once again, we're using the ternary, oper ternary operator. If we have a partial result count, which means that Tmux didn't actually count all the results, it stopped counting after a while, then we're going to show a plus symbol, otherwise we're going to show nothing, and then we're going to show the word result. So what this produces is something like uh, one result, or two results, three results, or maybe 99 plus results, depending. Um, and then finally, the offset from the top, this is really the, the thing that motivated this, this whole thing, is that I wanted to make the numbers count from the top down instead of from the bottom up. Um, so here we're using, once again, an expression with this time a negation operator. Um, so it basically takes the history size and makes it a negative history size. Um, and then, uh, where are we here? And then it takes the scroll position. Oh yeah, it's subtracting them, sorry. It was not making the history size negative. It is subtracting scroll position from history size. Those two numbers give what we want, which is you know the offset from the top of the buffer. So if I go back into, oops, if I go back into copy mode, um, we're near the bottom, we're 1700 lines down, but as I go up, um, the result of computing that expression uh, gives me the offset from the top. And then finally, uh, the copy mode location is just basically square brackets uh, with our offset from the top, followed by a slash, followed by the total size of the scrollback buffer. And then at the moment, I'm not actually putting anything in the copy mode center, so it's just, it's formatted and it's ready for me to put something in here, but I haven't put it there yet. Um, and then finally, we actually just assign it to the pain boredom format. Now, I don't have access to uh, the, the timer, so I don't know how long I've been talking, but it's probably like 10 minutes of the most incredibly dense and boring stuff you've ever seen about Tmux. But I think the mechanisms that I showed here for making your Tmux config readable, even when you do complex things, is highly useful. Um, so I hope that's been valuable to you, and I'll see you again with another screencast later on. Bye.